I'm not ashamed to say that I once had sex with Bill Chapman. Oh, you should have seen him sweating and grunting and so red in the face and wheezing. <laughs> Finally, I said, Bill, you better hurry up and finish. In two minutes, they're gonna start the roast. <laughs> Good to see my buddy Ron White here tonight. Ron, by the way, is the only fella in the world who the Reverend Billy Graham ever publicly called an ill-tempered douchebag. <laughs> I don't know if you know it or not, but Lisa Lampanelli, bless her heart, just had her vagina pierced. And she showed me, and I gotta tell you, it looks like a BB stuck in a taffy puller. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. That's going on my next album. All right, uh, but this isn't about Ron or Lisa or Bill Egvid or Engvall, or as he's known to his fans as Bill, let's get the hell out of here before he comes back on stage. <laughs> this is about my buddy Jeff. And just to let you know how nice Jeff is, tonight for the show he sent me a big limousine, one of them big stretches with a greyhound on the side of it. But I love Jeff. If it wasn't for Jeff, I wouldn't be where I am now. I'd be home whacking it to smoking a bandit too. And <laughs> stayed in New York City not getting paid to do this ego feeding bull. <laughs> Jeff in his single days loved women, but he was never picky. One time he picked up a sleazy girl in Mexico, and Jeff said it was the first time he ever had sloppy first. I said, Jeff, you might be a redneck if you sleep with that. Then came a series of redneck books for which I got no credit. <laughs> I ran into one of Jeff's old girlfriends the other day. Unfortunately, I was in my truck at the time. <laughs> That's why I'm doing the theaters. Uh, but seriously, Jeff is very competitive, very competitive. He once told me he could never be a gay man because he would probably be a ball hog. Jeff wasn't a very good bowler. I went to watch him bowl one time and caught a ball. <laughs> All right, I gotta work this out before I come up on TV. This ain't open mic night. Uh, but anyway, but God bless Jeff. Why would anybody stoop so low as to have their whole career defined by such a stupid phrase? Thank God I haven't done that. <laughs> Get her done. But, but I tell you what, I'm very thankful to Jeff. We said a lot of stuff about you, and uh, Jeff had faith in me and confidence in me and called me up to be on that tour. It's the best thing I've ever done in my whole life, and I thank you for it. God bless him, and get it done. Thank you. I had no idea, John, you had such a sharp tongue that must really hurt Saget's ass. You know, Bob, I was talking about your career the other day, and out of nowhere, a fat lady started singing. It was so weird. <laughs> Most of you don't know that Bob is the complete opposite of his image. His image, by the way, is funny. <laughs> Jeff, my darling husband, not in real life, but you know, you know I love you. People are always fascinated by Jeff, and they're always asking me, is Jeff really fat? No, the camera adds 465 pounds. <laughs> Doesn't matter, you're funny. Doesn't matter if you're a fat fuck, cause you're funny, right? That's all that really matters. A lot of funny here. This dais is graced with many, many fine comedians and Bob Saget. <laughs> what do you get when you cross Gilbert Gottfried with Jim Norton? I don't know, but you wouldn't want to fuck it. <laughs> Greg Giraldo, the reason vaginal dryness was invented. <laughs> Stamos. You're doable, but I wouldn't because you're one of those narcissistic, good-looking boys, like the kind of guy who calls out his own name when he's coming. <laughs> Let's face it, the only one who's getting screwed tonight is Bob Saget. <laughs> Bob is one of those people, every time you see him on TV, you think, whose dick did he suck to get that gig? You know, and, and I, know, I met your girlfriend, she's lovely. And one good thing we know is at least she's not a star fucker. <laughs> the, re 
reason I'm here is because it was a challenge to me. I love to putter in the kitchen, and this was an opportunity I couldn't pass up because I've baked a cake, I've fried a chicken, and this is the first time I had a chance to roast an asshole. So I, I figured I would just show up and do it. And you know, I just got a text message from my self-respect, and it said I have to leave. So um, good night, everybody. Thank you. That's a pretty dress you have on, Lee. Pink camouflage, that's uh, truly nice. You look like apocalypse cow. You know, I've been to Iraq and I've been to Afghanistan about 118 shows, but Lisa still has the biggest camel toe I've ever seen. Hey, let's talk about these other city slickers on stage. Greg Giraldo, who the fuck's that? You're really funny tonight, Greg. Between uh, roast, Greg has to sell his blood, sperm, and furniture to make rent. Luckily, all his furniture's covered in blood and sperm. <laughs> and Warren Sapp's here. Look at you, Warren, getting ready to do your first comedy stand-up debut, man. You look like Bernie Mac and Cheese. <laughs> and Marie McCormick's here, Marsha Brady. Marsha, 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 man. She used to get so high on coke, she'd hear voices in her head. Too bad none of them was an acting coach. Her country music career was such a tragic event, I could have written three albums about it. Her music was so bad, I forgave the Dixie Ticks. And it's really an honor for me to be here tonight with Gary Busey, man. Gary Busey's here, he's a good old Texas boy, Oklahoma boy. You know, Gary never got his star on Hollywood Boulevard, but dude, you did leave a nose on Pacific Coast Highway. The only guy who made worse travel decisions than you, pal, was Buddy Holly. <laughs> Is it too early for that shit? <laughs> and Jeff Foxworthy is so popular, he has fans that follow him from show to show, which is pretty easy to do when they live in their car. <laughs> Say what y'all want to about Jeff, but he's the only clean comic on the stage. And by that, I mean he can pass a drug test. His urine is crystal clear, and according to Larry, a little bit salty. <laughs> oh. oh, come on, Larry's been blowing Jeff so long, they could be cousins, man. <laughs> Truth is, Larry, you put a lot of smiles on a lot of people's faces. Times being what they are, I'd say that makes you a pretty great man. You may not be smart, you may not be funny, but somehow, you're a success. Larry symbolizes all that America has to offer. And as I speak, there are thousands of troops in Iraq and Afghanistan serving to protect that dream. That, and to get as far as possible away from Larry the Cable Guy. Good night. Thank you so very much, and good night. <laughs> oh, Jason Alexander, you are such a treat. You know, I was expecting you to be just dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> well, in all fairness, I was, I was basing that on everything you've ever done. But, <laughs> but isn't, this, isn't this just wonderful? I mean, all you youngsters getting together to tell naughty jokes. <laughs> uh, it's like the great roasts I went to in the good old days. <laughs> of course, you wouldn't have been allowed in, Michelle. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, we had our fun. <laughs> You know, I've been a huge Trekkie ever since the show first aired, and that's why I'm so thrilled to see Nichelle and George Takei here tonight, because, let's face it, we all know Shatner's nuts, <laughs> but George has actually tasted them. laugh when I see Artie Lang on stage, <laughs> knowing I'm going to outlive him. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh, 
but you know who I love. Look at that Patton Oswalt. So adorable. He's like a plump little troll. <laughs> Backstage, I caught him going up on Farrah Fawcett. You know, I don't mean any of this. You know that. I feel such a special connection to you, Farrah. I'm in my 80s, and that's the last decade you mattered. <laughs> <laughs> and who else is here tonight? Uh, well, where's Spock? And, and James Spader? And, and Bones? And Scotty? And, oh, Bill. All your friends are either dead or they hate you. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I'm a little of column A and a little of column B. <laughs> but you look great. You know, they make 1% milk now. Darling, you were supposed to explore the galaxy, <laughs> not fill it. <laughs> <laughs> All joking aside, Bill can be quite a charmer. I'm not ashamed to say that I once had sex with Bill Chapner. Oh, you should have seen him sweating and grunting and so red in the face and wheezing. <laughs> Finally, I said, Bill, you better hurry up and finish. In two minutes, they're going to start the roast. <laughs> of course, I'm still joking. Bill is a happily married man. I caught the bouquet at Bill's wedding. And I hope I'm still around to catch the cock ring at Sulu's. <laughs> Bill, the truth is, I dearly love you. I've always admired you as an actor. I think you're funny and smart and kind. And I was so excited when I found out I'd be working with you on Boston Legal till I work with you on Boston Legal. <laughs> Good night.